Chapter 1, Section 1.4, Lines. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about how to calculate the slope of a line, understanding slope of a line, slope-intercept form, finding the equation of a line, general form of a line, and finally, parallel and perpendicular lines. I'm going to go through this rather fast because this should be a review for everyone. If you have any questions, be sure to email me. First, let's review the slope of a line. And of course, here's the formula to find slope of a line. Remember, the slope means rise over run. And basically, the rise actually means the change in y, how y changes, and the change in x. And a new symbol for some of you will be this guy right here, the triangle. That means change, and you're going to see it a lot in calculus. So this actually means the change in y and the change in x. So let's use that formula to find the slope of the line containing the points negative 1, 4, and 2, negative 3. So we have m equals, we're going to take negative 3 minus 4 over 2 minus negative 1. So negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. 2 minus a negative 1 is actually 2 plus 1, which is 3. So the slope of the line containing these points is negative 7 over 3. Here's something rather interesting. Um, let's look over here at the positive slopes. You'll notice that as the positive slope becomes smaller, it gets closer to the y, or I'm sorry, it gets closer to the x-axis. Or if we can look at the other way, as the slope becomes larger, it gets closer to the y-axis. If we look over here at the negative slopes, now remember, negative is a little backwards, so this one is actually very, very small. So as the negative slope becomes smaller, it gets closer to the y-axis. As the negative slope becomes larger, it gets closer to the y-axis. So let's draw a graph of the line that contains the point negative 3, negative 5, and has a slope of 2. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to graph this guy, negative 3 and negative 5. So here we are. Now we have a slope of 2, so that means m equals 2, but we need to know what the rise over the run is, so we need to write that as a fraction. So that means we're going to rise 2 and run 1 from this point, not the origin, from this point. So let's rise 2, 1, 2, and run 1. This is our next ordered pair. We're going to rise 2, run 1, rise 2, run 1, rise 2, run 1, and so on. And when we draw our line, now your line hopefully is going to be straighter. Once again, put the arrows at the end to show that it goes to infinity. So this is the graph of the line that contains the point negative 3, negative 5, and has a slope of 2. This is probably so familiar, you're sick and tired of hearing it, but the slope-intercept form of an equation is y equals mx plus b where m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. Remember, the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. Let's find the slope m and the y-intercept b of the equation 3x minus 2y equals 6. And then we're going to graph the equation, which is going to be pretty simple. So first we're going to write 3x minus 2y equals 6. And this is actually called um, the general form. Remember, we want to get y by itself, so we're going to subtract 3x from both sides of the equal sign. Negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. We want y by itself, so we're going to divide each part by negative 2. So y equals 
3 halves x minus 3. Remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I'm just going to freehand this one really quick. Um, here is our y-intercept, down at negative 3. And our slope is 3 over 2, which is rise over run. So we're going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and run 2, 1, 2. Here's our next ordered pair. We're going to do it again. We're going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 2. And here is the graph of our line. Remember, this is how you have to put it into your calculator. So when you put it in your calculator, it should look very similar to this. So I did mention the general form, and that would be ax plus by equals c. And let's say we have this equation. And if we want to put it into our calculator, it has to be in y equals mx plus b form. So once again, let's just review that. We're going to get y by itself. So we need to subtract 3x from both sides. So 2y equals negative 3x plus 9. Every part gets divided by 2 because we want y by itself. So y equals negative 3 halves x plus 9 halves. And now it's in the form ready for our calculator. The last two topics for the day are parallel and perpendicular lines. Remember, a parallel lines have the same slope. So your slopes need to be the same. Perpendicular lines have negative reciprocals, or if you multiply their slopes, it should come to negative 1. An example would be, let's say my first slope is 2 thirds. A line that is perpendicular to this one would need to have a slope that is negative 3 halves. They're negative reciprocals of each other. Just like it says here to prove it, if I took 2 thirds times negative 3 halves, I would get negative 6 over 6, which is negative 1. So let's get a little more crazy here. Find an equation of the line that contains the point negative 4, 6, and is perpendicular to the line 2x minus y equals 4. Well, the first thing we need to do is figure out what is the slope of that line. So what we're going to do is first put it into y-intercept form. It means we're going to get y by itself. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. Negative y equals negative 2x plus 4. We're going to divide each part by negative 1 because we want to get y by itself. We don't want negative y. So we have y equals 2x minus 4. Remember, this is your slope, m, and this is your y-intercept, b. So let's talk about the perpendicular line. The perpendicular line, remember, has to have negative reciprocal slope from this line. So the slope of this line is 2 over 1. So the slope of the perpendicular line will be negative 1 half. So y equals negative 1 half x plus b. We're going to look at our point here. They don't give us our y-intercept, so we're going to need to do a little figuring here. We need to find b. We don't know b, but we do have an x and a y to choose. So we're going to put 6 in for the y, and we're going to put negative 4 in for x, and we're going to solve for b. So 6 equals 2, because negative half times negative 4 is a positive, plus b, subtract 2, so it turns out that b equals 4. Now, hopefully I have enough room in here. So the equation of the line that contains the point negative 4, 6, 
and is perpendicular to the line 2x minus y equals 4 is y equals negative 1 half x plus 4. Here's my slope, and here's my y-intercept. Okay, that's the end of the lecture for today. Um, your assignment is to complete 1.4 homework. If you did have any questions about what we did or problems, remember that you can go to the study plan or the extra problems to um, practice more or, you know, email me and I can help you out too.